Hello and welcome to the Bat Cave. I am your host, Blind Bat 8719. On today's video, I'm going to be going over my Narset of the Ancient Way Cycling deck. Um, I got the I got the idea for this deck because I was playing a lot of Ikoria Limited, and cycling is probably the best archetype to get into if you're drafting in Ikoria Limited. And I was wondering, and I wanted to bring um, build, actually I wanted to build a cycling deck for Brawl and I knew that red and white were the best colors for it and I thought blue had a lot of good potential I'm thinking like Shark Typhoon, Boon of the Wish Giver um, Ominous Seas so I was, th so I wanted to build a Jeskai or a Raugrith, I think is how it's pronounced uh, built, colored based deck uh, looking around at the commanders that were available to me, Narset seemed to be the best fit, and I wanted to build a deck using her as the commander. The other possibilities were Karkar of the, uh, the Cold Wind, the Fury Wind, I believe. And while he would work similarly in a possibly a deck like this, he is also more of a Spells Matters deck. Same thing with Vardak, um, being Spells Matter, uh, and also wanting to mutate more creatures. Um... So, I, yeah, I basically was looking to build a cycling deck, and I wanted to play with Narset. I thought she would fit very well into this deck. The goal of this deck is basically to try to draw more cards than our opponent, and by seeing more cards in them, uh, we will be able to overwhelm them with the card advantage by, you know, getting more seeing more cards than they can. Um, let's go over the deck. Uh, so, Mana Ramp. We're going to start there. I have... Arcane Signet, uh, again, it's, it's, it's a three-color deck. This would be something that I think you, in any three-plus color deck, actually in any multicolor deck you play in Brawl, Arcane Signet is a card you should include, and I would say it's almost a must-include, because uh, it just fixes your mana at the low cost of uh, paying two. So this is definitely worth playing in any multicolor deck. Midnight Clock. Um... I know there are a lot of other three-drop spells, uh, artifacts that could ramp me in these color. Uh, now I was saying these colors. There's not a lot of mana fixing or mana ramping in white, blue, and red. Um, I like the appeal of drawing the cards, the second effect of the the 12, uh, 12 counters on it. Since we plan on going through all of our deck with the cycling, we're seeing a lot of our cards. Um, and possibly not having, and basically almost possibly milling out. I see the midnight clock as a way of preventing us from milling out and shuffling more spells into our library uh, to be recast against our opponent. Uh, Raugrin uh, Crystal. This is the white, red. I'm sorry. This is the blue, red, and white uh, crystal from Ikoria. Again, there are other three mana uh, mana fixtures I could play, but I wanted to be more on theme with the cycling. Uh, so that's why I chose the Rao Green Crystal as opposed to, um, I can't think of their names right now, but um, the the artifact from Ravnica that lets you make all your lands tap for any colors, um, or the ones that give your cr creatures a plus one plus zero oh boost. Um, and the last mana a ramp we have is Fires of Invention. This card uh, is banned in a lot of formats, as you can see on the screen. So it means it's a good card. So if it's legal in Brawl, it's worth playing. Also, since we want to be doing a lot of cycling, if we don't spend mana on our spells, that frees up our mana then to actually cycle spells we have in our hand. Now, for the removal, there's not a lot of removal. Um, I actually, I'm going to go over what Narset, as one of, this, she's one of the pieces of removal in the deck, but I should probably go over the card as my commander. Uh, Narset of the Ancient Way costs one, a blue, a red, and a white. Uh, she comes in with four loyalty. Plus one, you gain two life. Add a blue, red, or white. Spend this mana only to cast a non-creature spell. Minus two, draw a card, then you may discard a card. When you discard a non-land card this way, Narset of the Ancient Way deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to target creature or planeswalker. And then minus six, you get an emblem with... with Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this emblem deals two damage to any target. Um, the other removal spells we have in the deck is Go for Blood. Target creature you control fights, target creature you don't control. It's one in a red and it cycles for one. 
Shredded Sails, destroy target artifact or deal four damage to target creature we're flying. It's also one in a red and it cycles for two. And then there's Xenoflare, two red and a white. Xenoflare deals X damage to any target and you gain X life or X the number of cards with cycling ability in your graveyard. This is the card that basically makes the, is busted in the limited format. Uh, so we're hoping to win with this card more than not and being able to draw it again with Midnight Clock or Emergency Powers that I discussed later uh, it would be ideal. In terms of board wipes in the deck, all we were, I'm running a one of Shadow to the Sky. Um, I, w I had this deck built a little bit differently, and I was going as I was going through it, uh, applying a template that I, I, I kind of copied off the Command Zone podcast. I modified it for Brawl. Uh, I didn't really have any board wipes. I probably could use more board wipes in the deck, but I wanted to play with more cycling cards, so I included the one Shadow to the Sky to uh, wipe the board if the opponent starts playing too many creatures out. Um, now, what are some of our payoffs for playing all these cycling cards that draw us extra cards? So our payoffs are Ominous Seas, which is one in a blue. Whenever you draw a card, put in a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas. Remove eight counters from Ominous Seas. We create eight, eight blue Kraken creature token. This card also cycles. We have Improbable Alliance. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1-1 blue, one, one blue Fairy Creature Token with Flying. It also lets us draw and discard for 6. Iron Crag Pyromancer. Whenever you draw your second card, deal 3 damage to any target. Uh, this can definitely be a very, is very worth, is a, sorry, this is a very useful payoff card to have. Mad Ratter lets us go wide by creating two 1-1 one, one Black Creature Tokens, Black Rat Creature Tokens, whenever, whenever we draw our second card. Dream Trawler is one of the big boys we want to be able to uh, pay off with. Flying in Lifelink for two a white, two white and two blue. It's a three five. Whenever you draw a card, it gets plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. Whenever Dream Trawler attacks, uh, draw a card, and then you can discard a card to give it hexproof until end of turn and tap it. So in a normal turn, you would draw for your turn and you'll draw for the Dream Trawler attack, so it'll become a five five. But with all the cycling we have. We can easily pump this up, um, you know, two, three cards in a turn to make it an eight, five, uh, potentially. And then the other one would be Niv Mizzet Perun. He's triple blue, triple red for a five, five flying dragon wizard. This spell can't be countered. Whenever you draw a card, Niv Mizzet Perun deals one damage to any target, and whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery card, you draw a card. We're already planning on drawing a lot of cards in this deck with the cycling ability, so being able to ping things off with Niv Mizzet ability uh, was just a nice thing, to, you know, nice payoff, or nice incentive to be drawing cards. So this whole pile is a list of cards that draws us cards. In fact, the, our car, uh, the only things that don't draw us cards in the deck are Iron Crag Pyromancer, Fires of Invention, Mad Ratter, Xena Flare, Arcane Signet. Um, and I think Shadow of the Sky. Those are the only things that have no card draw attached to them at all. Everything else has card draw. Um, unpre unpredictable Cyclone, three red, red. If a cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card and set exile cards on the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the card that you had just cycled. You may cast that card by paying its mana cost. And then you take those exile cards and uh, put them on the bottom of your library in a random order. This also cycles. I wanted to highlight this card because of its interaction with Fires of Invention. I've learned through many, uh, through a few games now that playing Fires of Invention and an Unpredictable Cyclone out on the field at once is not actually as cool as it seems. Um, Fires of Invention limits us to only casting two spells a turn and to only casting spells on our turn. Most of the time, we want to be keeping our mana up and cycle on our opponent's turn. If we cycle, because and Fire's Invention is out along with Unpredictable Cyclone, we will not be able to cast the spell um, because of the restriction from Fire's of Invention. Also, so we wait till our turn to do this stuff, we can only cast two things. Cycling cost compared to the mana cost of a lot of the, our spells and creatures is a lot cheaper. So we'd rather, if we have Unpredictable Cyclone out, spend eight mana to cast four spells that probably have a total conver uh, converted mana cost of like 20 mana. 
as so we don't want to so if i ever play out fires of invention i will either cycle or hold on to unpredictable cyclone if i think they're going to blow up fires and if i have fire if I, if I have unpredictable cyclone out first then i will have hold on to fires of invention or pitch it to narset for her minus two ability last card i want to talk about is emergency powers oh i forgot about the lands but i want to talk about emergency powers I saw this card uh, when it first came out, I believe, in Guilds of Ravnica, um, and I fell in love with it. Uh, I think it's a fun effect, uh, especially the addendum part. So, Emergency Powers is five, white, and a blue. Each player shuffles their hand and grave into the library, then draws seven cards. Exile Emergency Powers. Addendum. If you cast Emergency Powers during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. One of my favorite mechanics to play with is a mechanic called Cascade, which essentially lets you pay, cast one spell and get a free spell in addition to what you already cast. Emergency Powers is very much like Cascade in that if you do it during your main phase, you get to shuffle your, uh, your hand and graveyard into your library, draw seven cards, and then cast something seven or less for free. So I very, it's a card that very much appeals to me. Now over to the mana base, the one thing I wanted to note, this is a three color deck, and what I've discovered with three color decks at least, and probably anything that's three or more, uh, three or more colors in Brawl, um, is Plaza of Harmony. Plaza of Harmony, we don't care so much about the gaining three life if you control two or more gates, it's more the second mana ability. Add one mana of any type of a, that a gate you control could produce. Since we're playing three colors, we get to run three gates. Is it Guild Gate, Boris Guild Gate, um, and the Azorius Guild Gate? If we manage to get two Guild Gates out into play and have Plaza of Harmony out, we just created a new command tower. So what I have found, so I preferred playing Guild Gates in my multicolor decks that are three or more colors. Excuse me. Strictly for the fact that I get to play Plaza of Harmony and get a second command tower into my deck. I think this uh, playing this is worth it uh, over the lands that only give you one life when they come into play tapped. And then because we're also playing the guild gates and the mana fixtures and whatnot, we also get to play Field of the Dead. Again, this is a card that was uh, banned, as you see on the screen. So if it was banned in standard and it's playable in brawl, it's probably a card worth playing if your mana can afford if you can afford to with your mana base. All right, so that's the deck uh, deck tech. Let's go into uh, the Brawl Arena. All right, welcome to game one. We are playing against Sick, piloting a Thassa Deep Dwelling deck, which is a mono blue deck. Uh, Thassa lets you, um, the quick little term is blink out permanence, which lets them leave the battle and come back. Um, I'm gonna expect it's mono blue, probably a lot of control magic and probably wanting to beat me down with a uh, agent of treachery using re using its ability repeatedly with Thassa. Uh, I got two lands. I'm gonna seize. I'm going to. Mm, I'm going. I got a lot of mullet. I'm gonna keep this actually. I can cycle a bunch of cards to try to get to the blue. Ah, I'll take the free mulligan. All right, I got my colors better. Yeah, I'll keep this. With the imposing Vantasaur, I can cycle for one. I have Fires of Invention I can get to and neutralize as well. So let's say hello to the opponent. And lead off with the Triome. Alright. Uh, we drew Temple of Triumph. They played an island out. Uh, let's start with Temple of Triumph. Let's try that. Will of the All Hunter. We don't need that right now. Put that to the bottom. And then at the end of my opponent's turn, I'm going to cycle Imposing Vantasaur. Alright. Xena Flare. Okay. Alright. Play out the Azorius Guild Gate. And pass the turn. All right, so I have a decision to make here. Do I want to hold on to neutralize? No, now that they're playing Cloud Kinsir, I do not. I want a Cyclist, so I want to be able to get my uh, fourth land drop so I can cast Narset on turn. All right, did not get there. Well, actually, if I get the fourth land drop, I can play Fires. There we go. Oh, dang, it's a Boros Guildgate. 
All right, so this comes into play tapped. I will be unable to cast Fires of Invention this turn. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the Iron Crag Pyromancer, get that onto play. Blue is, Blue's way of dealing with creatures is to counterspell them. Uh, so if something's already in play, yes, there's bounce effects where they like unsummon, they can return a creature to its owner's hand. Um, I'm not really afraid of that effect right now, and it seems like he's trying to go on the value train. Uh, my opponent casts Thassa, he's gonna hit me for two, he's now gonna blink the, the Seer so that he can now draw another card. So he's gonna try to drown us in card advantage, kind of like how we're trying to do that. All right, we have a fifth land. Okay, I would say, let's play out Fires of Invention. Let's play out Narset. Cast Reveal, turn to the cost. I, I can draw, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna draw my second card. I don't necessarily need to discard anything. Um, then strike. I'm gonna decline, so I have more cards in hand. This lets me now trigger Iron Crag, and I get to kill their creature that way. And then no attacks. So this is two, and Godzilla is also two. Augur of Bolas. So, he's got two mana open. All right, he whiffed on the first Augur. Gonna do Augur again. He whiffed again. He's got two mana open. I don't necessarily want to um, cast one of my spells. Like I was hoping to get Dream Trawler. Don't want to like, cast anything and... Get, uh, oh, actually, there we go. Let's, so, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cycle Coordinated Charge. Activate the ability. Because if I draw a six land, that's not it. All right, I'm gonna deal three damage here. Um, Lazotep plating. That doesn't, all right, so I can't get around this because the ability is already on the stack. Footfall crater is one. What I could try and do is search for another land. It comes into play untapped. Mm. I'm trying to think here. Um, let's cycle Godzilla in response. Let's try to get that six land. And we drew Godzilla. That is funny. That is funny. All right. Now, it's entirely possible that I should have held off. Oh, actually, here we go. I can use... Let me add a red. I'm gonna add a red. I'm gonna cast Footfall Trader. Um, actually, I don't need it. I can use the alternate cost. I'm gonna put it on an island. And then I'm gonna... Oh, I can cast another spell. Well, doesn't work this turn. I should've done that in response and I didn't think this out as fast. Okay. I'm gonna end the turn now. So what I want to do is I want to be able to, I'm going to play Dream Troll out quickly if I can and use the ability on Footfall Crater to give it haste and trample. All right, so now we're going to have some problems with Cavalier Gales. Uh, all right, so who can attack? Thassa can attack. I might be losing Narset this turn then. All right, he, uh, let's just do a token block here. Just, why not? It's fine that Narset dies. Gives us a reset. Take the action. I think Cavalier Gales is next. He probably should have done Augur of Bolas, honestly, because we're giving him two blockers. He has no idea that we're gonna try to get out uh, two hasty attackers. Fable Passage, put that out there. Um, activate the ability. 
doesn't really matter what we get. So. Alright. Dream Trawler. Cast with the alternative cost. I think it's actually worth it. I'd rather have the Dream Trawler around. So let's see if I can... Cast the alternative cost. Okay, cool. Pay the extra mana. That's minus two. That's four. I'm gonna discard the Lava Serpent. Sure. Deal three damage to the Augur of Bolas. Have her deal damage there. And Dream Trawler draws. That resolves. Three damage there. I could cycle Godzilla um, right now to get a bigger boost. I think I'm going to wait. Um, wait. Oh, why, wait, wait. Why can't I full control? All right, cool. Whoopsies. Let's give Dream Trawler haste. Resolve. Now we go to attackers. Okay. Four. All right, I think we'd rather play Rallyant now. Yeah. Five. Gain some life. Oh, can't cast anything more. Okay. End the turn. Alright, so they have six mana. The devotion of one now for Thassa. Hopefully now I've dealt with all of the devotion making or the larger devotion making creatures. Riddle Master Sphinx. An opponent controls to its owner's hand. Okay. That's fine with me, because I can't... Is this a cycle for one? He cycles for two. If he cycles for one, I'd go for it. Alright, that's fine. Well, he's going to ping Narset for one. Why must we do things the hard way? Oh, dang, I didn't think of that. All right, so I'm all right. So here's my plan. I want to use Zena Flare to basically just kill the Riddle Master Sphinx. All right, that resolves. Sphinx Trawler gets bopped to my hand. I want to go for this crazy play right now. All right, so what we got here? Let's play out the island. All right, so. Let's plus Narset, gain some life, make it a white. Alright, so let's cast Xena Flare for five. Oh! Alright, never mind. My strategy of going. I want to do Dream Trawler into Emergency Powers, but that's not going to work because I already cast my two spells for the turn. So I would say let's just hit him with a Godzilla then. Right, cast Alternative Cost. Alright. So hit him for eight. Now he's gotta find a way to deal with Godzilla. Um, and he won't see the dream hopefully he won't see the Dream Trawler emergency powers combo we have coming up, because that would be seven plus five is twelve exactly. And then if we need to, if he bounces somehow, Baron Tolarian Archmage to to its owner's hand. Getting your end up of creature. Okay, I don't think he's gonna. He might bounce back Godzilla. Bouncing back Narset. Okay, so what does he have in? Put it to my hand. What does he have in response to how he's gonna deal with the Godzilla? Just block it. Tomb Raider. Okay. All right, he might concede at this point. I don't see a way of him out of them for this. 
I'll take. Yeah, I think he's conceding because he's hitting me for one. Doesn't do anything here. I forgot about the bounce effect, actually, again. That's really what it is. <laughs> Alright, Godzilla comes back to my hand. Okay. Let's go with my turn. Alrighty. Uh, let's play the Evolving Wild. So let's crack that. Search for a planes. Alright, cash for the alternative cost. Let's give her haste and trample. So it's 10, 11. I'll leave him down to 1. Oh, but it just seems like so much fun to try to do that. Alright, so let's see. Alright, next. All attack. Draw a card. Oh, there we go. Next, the blockers. All right, this is what we're gonna do. I just realized it now. All right, so let's just start cycling everything to build her up, because we're gonna draw it all again anyways off of the emergency powers. And this is not counting against our uh, spell counts. Alright, it's Godzilla again. Ominous Seas for the last one. Alright, and now let's cast Emergency Powers. And that should do the trick. Maybe it was a little late with a good game, but... Alrighty, there we go. That's that's me having some fun with that. That was so much fun. <laughs> Alright, hello and welcome to game number two. We're playing against Fast Grim Peter, piloting a two-lane Teller of Tales deck. This is Bant color, so white, blue, and green. Uh, expecting a lot of uh, returning things back to his hand to get some value. Almost like an, um, an Uro of sorts. Got three lands, I got some spells I can cast. I'm going to keep this one. All right, got two lands coming into play tapped. The white source comes into play tapped. What is the best way to play this part now? I'm gonna play out the Azorius Guildgate. Start with that first. Uh, Castle Ventures may have to come into play tapped. But we'll see, I'm gonna try to, I think what I'm gonna do is play out Mountain. All right, Niv Mizzet. All right, so we'll play out Mountain, and we'll play out a Dranith Healer. So next turn, I won't be able to, unless I draw an Island, I won't be able to play out Midnight Clock on turn three, because uh, Castle Adventure will come in and play tap, but I'll still be able to cast a Probable Alliance. Now we have a Flourishing Fox. Oh, okay. This changes some things around. All right, so I still want to get the Improbable Alliance out. Start building towards um, you know, I forgot he had blue in the deck. Dovin's Veto. Okay, well, let's take the free attack here. He might hit us back for two, but we can gain some life with the Dranith Healer. That's not going to matter as much. I mean, if even I played out Flourishing Fox, he probably would have countered that, because in Limited, this gets out of hand. I can only imagine, uh, so that I would think that has a reputation for seeding it. Migratory Great Horn mutated onto the Elf. So he ramps, and then if he gets something that comes into play that's bigger than the Migratory Great Horn, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. Alright. I think we'll play out Flourishing Fox. And probably cycle the Rakeling Claws here. I know I could have used the Midnight Clock to advance my mana, but I feel like I get more mana use of my mana doing this instead. 
Um, so I'm using everything up this turn. Two lane. All right, two. Okay, vigilance. When we cast creature spell, draw a card, make put a land card from your hand to battlefield. Three. Return target creature card you control to its owner's hand. So if he mutates, he gets two creatures back to his hand, which lets him get rebuy on his uh, castings. I think this is cast. When you cast, so the mutate's actually pretty good in that regard. No blocks. Gains double strike until end of turn. Let's cycle a Raikling Claws. Right, I didn't see if I did Midnight Clock. Well, at Midnight Clock, I'd only be able to cycle. Uh, I'd only be able to cycle Frostville Ambush and get Dranith Healer. I wouldn't be able to use Flourishing here. All right. So, Fabled Passage. Activate the ability. Let's get another red source. All right, if I spend three, I have two left over. Um, I could play Narset and Pitch Niv Mizzet um, to kill Chulane, or at least, um, you know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Narset. I'm going to minus two. I'm going to probably pitch Niv Mizzet. Niv Mizzet here. And I'm going to deal actually the four damage here. This way he can't get two more creatures into his hands. I No attacks. I'm willing to sacrifice Stranath Healer to block Chulane if he goes after Narset. Uh, Thoromorn falls. He gains one life back up to 20. Biomancer is familiar. Activated abilities cost two less. So Chulane now only costs one. And the other effect is this has something to do with all right, uh, the um, adapt mechanic. All right, 2-2 two, two Flyer. All right, Frostville Ambush. Okay. So, let's see now. I could pay three and two. I could cycle for one. I could tap down two of his creatures and still cycle for two. If I tap down two of his creatures, I can't, if I cast... Let's go with Midnight Clock. Let's plus her, Narset. Let's add a blue. To open the mind, you must first open the Let's add another blue. Play out Ominous Seas. We're going to start drawing on that regard. I also have a Dream Trawler set up as well. I'm going to swing. I swing with Flourishing Fox. He blocks. I don't kill anything. Doesn't do me any good. Mm, no attacks. End the turn. This way then, if he... My feeling is, I was, I was thinking about it, uh, Marifil, the Pixie might be able to hit Narset, bring her down to one, but if I keep these two back, I can potentially block and save here, and I can trade here. What is he mutating onto? The Flyer. All right, so there goes by Narset. That ain't... Nothing's happening there. Draws a card with the other ability. All right, I think I just got to go whole, all into now with this uh, cycling and maybe using Dream Trawler. He's got a 7-7 seven, seven now. All right, so yeah, we're going to try to see if we can gain some life and pull some shenanigans off. All right, so that's fine. Narset's going to go. Let's see if we can draw some more stuff and get... Uh, you take the action. Move into my command zone. Let's cycle the Frostville Ambush. He's got another counter on it. Or it's the first counter on it. The other way I see maybe getting out of this would be to be aggressive with the midnight clock. Because um, now I can go up to at least three counters a turn. No attacks. Keep back the blockers and the turn. If he does try to kill this somehow, I could always give it hexproof with the is it guild guildgate by discarding it. Uro getting some value. 
Double Earl almost. Draw a card, put a land in the play. Draw another card, put a land in the play. I got the land that time. Okay. Actually, if he wanted to be tricky, he could actually, with the sacrifice trigger on the stack, bring it back to his hand with Tulane and go nuts that way. You constantly just pay three to draw a card, gain three life, and put a land into play. All right, so that's 14. Um, I'm going to block this in the hopes that I can gain some life and make up, make up for it. All right, it's our turn. All right, midnight clock. All right, he's gonna sacrifice the cryptic cave to draw a card. Four counters. All right, double life link doesn't really do me anything here. I could make a four four. I can put it on the flourishing fox. Um, try to get me some more life. All right. Um. I think I'm gonna cycle and maybe bring that up. All right, so next, let's go with an all attack. Let's see what he's got for surprises here. We have a Shadow of the Sky. That's good. Now, the, how likely are we that it's actually gonna be successfully cast? He's got all his mana open because of the Wilderness Reclamation. He's got four cards in hand next to blockers. Let's see if he blocks anything. I mean, Chulain's, nope, he's not, all right. Well, probably should be playing out the Splendor Mare than cycling it. But we'll put a lifelink counter on the Flourishing Fox. We'll gain some more life. We gotta try to outrace 13 plus damage a turn, maybe? Hmm, do I get greedy with the crystal? I think I get greedy with the crystal. I mean, he's probably waiting on a bounce thing, and I'm going to be crying afterwards after this. But we're hitting him for 11. Let's go off of the serpent as well. Uh, we essentially also just gave ourselves an 8-8 blocker now. That is so much use of the mana. I got him down to 7, we go up to 33. That was pretty good job, I'd say. All right, let's end the turn. So we'll hope we have the guild gate in hand in case we want to protect the dream trawler. We're gonna probably use the ominous seas at the end of their turn to give myself another, give myself an eight eight that I can attack. If he hits me for fourteen, I'm fine. If he hits me for uh, eighteen, I'm fine with that because it means he has no blocker. Oh, that's the pixie, so we can always add mana with that. Also, depending on what I draw, he has his own dream trawler. All right, well that made the math a lot harder now. All right, so with Narset, if I draw something that has a certain amount of a higher converted mana cost, I can try Hydroid Crisis. He has a lot of flying blockers now. So I think popping off for an 8 a creature right now, he might attack for the six, which is fine. Um, He's not. I'm a little flabbergasted at the moment of what I should probably, what's the best thing to do here. Um, I 
feel like what I'm going to try and do here is swing. He doesn't know what I have. I could swing out and try to wipe the board. I have four, five, six. I have eight. I have ten mana. Right? Four, one, two, three, four, five. I'm nine. I could try to use Narset to draw another card. I'm just going to swing here and see what we come up with. And we block with his Dream Trawler with a 6-6. Six, six. Blocking with the 1-1. One, one. Alright, that actually isn't terrible. So I don't gain any life, no damage is dealt. I'm gonna go for it? By casting Shadow to the Sky? Yes, he's probably going to replay out the Hydroid Crisis and gain, draw a lot of cards. Alright. Play out the Hatter. End the turn. It's possible that I could be more patient. Um, I don't always have the best patience sometimes uh, playing the game. I just kind of want to keep doing something, doing action, and it's possible that I overreacted, that maybe I shouldn't have wiped the board there, especially knowing that he was going to basically refill everything and have a Hydroid Crisis. So he drew two. All right. Let's activate and get 8-8 eight, eight and see if he has a response to that. Giant killer. Okay. Alright. So we're going to play out the island. We're going to play her out. If I play 3... Six. If I pay six mana, puts me two counters. Doesn't get me any closer. So let's try playing out Narset. Let's draw our second card. Your mind. This tramples. Okay. Strike with a cunning mind. No point in doing that. Uh, we'll just shoot our opponent for three. Nothing's gaining him life at the moment, so. We have a little bit of a cushion. No attacks. Alright, so 9. Archer makes 10. So we can go off twice on it. So, if I can find a way to draw two cards on an opponent's turn, where it's almost worth it maybe to now play an R set again, like... Uh, use her minus two ability and play Narset's ability again, uh, so that, or sorry, pay minus minus two, draw the second card, shoot them for another three, then have it ready again, cast Narset next turn as well. Um, I don't see how my opponent. Okay, I was spoke too soon. Like I forgot about Uro, so Uro's going to gain him three life, which kind of negates the Ironclad uh, uh, damage. And I assume with the Jean and the Great Heart is going to gain another three life to avoid, yep, dying to the Pyromancer. How close is he to decking out? He's got 25 left, okay. Hero of Precinct 1. Oh, that is a fun card. I enjoy playing with this card a lot. Chromatic Lantern, that was the name of the card I couldn't remember before. 
Azusa, Lost But Seeking. That's a good addition for this kind of deck. Oh. Uh, I don't think he's gaining life at this point. I think he's going to be blowing up um, uh, one of my artifacts or enchantments. Yep. Alrighty. Not entirely sure. I think the only way I get out of this is if I use... Uh, Oh, I need to redraw my hand and get a Shadow of the Skies going. So if I pay six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, and Field Room makes four, that does. Oh, so we have a five, five. Oh, look, I might as well just take the nine here because there's no. I can't. Uh, none of this blocking does me any good. I can't kill any of this stuff. Um, and so I'll take the 9 damage. I'm at 33. Puts me down, I think, to 22. Not 24. He has a lot of things on his side that I need to be afraid of. Midnight clock goes off. Alright. Field of Ruin. Add a blue. Put a counter on there. Put the final other counter, and let's spin the wheel and see what we get. All right. Uh, three damage. Probably better off doing that into a Johnny. One, two, three, four, five mana. Um, I think they got us here because there's nothing. Well, it's great that we have the cyclone. I don't have any mana that start going nuts. Uh, let's see, five. Can I play a land? I can't play a land. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, wait. I do I have anything that cycles for one? All right. We'll add in our set. This is either gonna work or we're gonna die in a blaze of glory. All right. So, go for blood is a sorcery. By cycling it, I can maybe hit into a shatter the skies to get out of this. The effect still goes off, though. I would like to think. Nope. Okay. They got me. Good game. We're going to concede that. Ugh. All right. That was close. Almost got there. To game three, we're playing against Mini Barrel, piloting a Kinnon Bonder Prodigy deck, which is a blue green commander um, that is very popular on Brawl right now. Okay, Azoria Skills May Fable Passage, Ominous Seas, Midnight Clock, Drana Stinger. Uh, uh, he's probably gonna erase us really quickly. Um, Kinnon tends to go really explosive over the top. Um, really, we want to get to our board wipe. Um, the ominous seas is tempting. I'm gonna take. Yeah, because I can't. I don't have anything on two. I'll take the free mulligan here. If one of those lands came to play on tapped, I probably would have tried keeping it. Okay, I'll give this a try. Alright, we got Boom. Boom of the Wish Giver we can use on one. Probably Alliance on two. All right. Actually, maybe hold on to Boone. On turn three. All right. Play Stone Vents. Pay two life. Pass the turn. We drew Valiant Rescuer with the cycling of two. Don't have any white at the moment, so that might be my better. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna cycle Boone now, so this way I can have 
probable alliance on two. Maybe cast Valiant Rescuer or Cyclid on turn three. Fires and Invention on four. And that'll let's get us Narset out on time if we get to our fourth land drop. Um, right, there is no probable alliance on two because Plaza of Harmony doesn't work. All right, so Plaza of Harmony. I think our best bet now would probably be to cycle reconnaissance mission. Well, we'll actually, let's wait. Um, let's wait to the end of their turn, just so they think I might have a counter spell. Metamize prophecy. I haven't seen this card a lot. Scry to choose a card name when you cast spell control the card name. Draw two cards. It's not keen in that. All right. At this point, we'll cycle the reconnaissance mission. We need a charge. Okay. Solar flare. Field of ruin doesn't help us out for its second ability. It is mana though. Coordinated charge is a two. Breaking claws is a two. I think at this point, let's cycle the coordinated charge, try to get to that land drop. All right, hollowed, hollowed found, okay. All right, so I kind of missed it. I forgot we were going second. I thought we were just a short, shorter land, so that's why I, cyc I was cycling, thinking I was going to get the fourth land drop for the turn, didn't cycle it. I either play out the Valiant Rescue or cycle one. Shadow Spear. He's got two green open. Pay the two life. We're gonna cast fires. What do I want to cast here? He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. He could start using Keenan's ability. I think at this point I'm gonna go with. Xena flaring Keenan now, so that next turn he can't. I mean, I know he's probably going to want to cast a card that he knows, but I don't want him to be able to start using Keenan's ability to look at the top seven cards and choose a, or I think it's seven, six or seven, and choose a non human creature and put it into play. Alright, Renata brings. This creature is a plus one plus one cow on the end of the battlefield. Alright, Godzilla. Alright, so things we can cast for free are things that have. Uh, I can cast everything for free essentially at this point. Um, so I think we'll go with casting. Cycle another card or draw your second card. Right now I can cycle just about everything. I think what I'll do is I'm going to go with Mad Ratter and Improbable Alliance. I'm going to start with these. And then start cycling away. Uh, keep the creature. Cycle the raking claws. There's that. Here's our fifth land. Not that it doesn't trample. Uh, pay the two life now. To do that, I can cycle the crystal. I'm gonna let it end play tap, keep the life total up. What just happened there? Alright, there we go. And then let's end the turn. Top card for each player's library. Alright. Thorn mana. 
that resolves. I'm probably gonna get rid of the ratter. Pass to attackers. Let's jump with the rat. I'm gonna hold off on cycling because when I can play out Valiant Rescuer next turn, cycle and play out and cycle next turn as well with Godzilla. All right, so he knows I have a mountain. That's fine. Hmm. Let me. Oh, okay. Let me play out Narset first. I want to draw a card because then I can discard Godzilla. rid of the thorn mana. Alright. Alright, that draws me another blocker. And I think we're gonna go play the midnight clock out. Start trying to put some more. I get another. I don't get another spell. Yes. All right. Next. No attacks. I was briefly thinking of attacking in the air for one, but I'd rather him rather have two blockers for Narset in case he has a way of dealing with one of the flying fairies. Keeping my man open, he doesn't know what I have. Is he playing Keenan out now? Seven. Uh, this could be an end razor, this could be the green artifact, uh, the legendary artifact from Eldraine. Or a Voracious Hydra, X equal to five. And a double encounters. All right, and he tramples. Okay, so we want to be drawing a lot now, I guess. Okay. Hmm. Cycling now. I can pay the three. This is two and two to cycle, and I can still put a counter on it. All right, so let's cycle, for, let's cycle two now. We'll draw another card, which will trigger the Improbable Alliance. Crystal for two. Alright, so we drew two lands. And let's put a counter on Midnight Clock. Alright. Let's cycle the football crater. Shark Typhoon. If I had a way of casting more spells, um, I would go with the Shark Type. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could cast it for free. I think making it into a big dude and drawing another card doesn't afford me much. So I think I'd rather play out a land. Play the Shark Typhoon out for free. I cycled it. So let me let me draw another card with Narset. Recast her. Pay the two for the tax and get a four four body. Uh, decline. Drana Stingers one to cycle. Narset's going to die. I know that, so I don't see the point in increasing at all. I'd rather just put more cards in my hand. I can swing. She's going to die, so I might as well swing with three tokens. Put a 
little bit of a dent into the opponent. So the counter now is up to four. I can put up a five, it'd be six by my turn. Shadow Sphere. What does that give it now? Life, lifelink and Trample. Alright, so he's going to get a lot of life. Okay. Basically, I'm trying to draw to a Shadow Sphere. Um, Shadow of the Skies at the moment. Okay, Garrick's Uprising. So this is going to help him draw a lot of cards. He's probably going to, you know, uh, well, he's using his mana efficiently trying to use everything up, but anytime he plays a large creature with power 4 or greater, he gets to draw another card. Alright, so now this is all about protecting the life total. So if I'm trying to dig to a Shadow of the Sky, that pretends, protects 5 damage from happening to me. I'll start with that. Then 5 damage. So I go down to 10. I'm going to cycle Granite Healer for 1. I'd like to uh, probably draw another card to activate the Improbable Alliance this turn. This will go up to 5, 6, 7, land makes 8. Hmm. I think I need the bodies more to try to, and try to draw. So we'll take the extra body. Right now, the other creatures don't trample. Hmm? They all have trample. Why is that? of Garrick's Uprising. Okay. Play out the mountain. We play out Dream Trawler. Maybe I should have drawn first. I'm I was thinking of if I draw with Narset here, I would be able to at least give it a plus one boost probably really doesn't matter right now, and especially now if I draw the Shadow of the Skies. <clears throat> Command Tower. Drawing all the lands now, okay. Alright, I already played my land for the turn. I have nothing to cycle. I have, alright, so I put, I'm at 5, that's 6, 7, I can go up to eight on the midnight clock. I think at this point again, we're just gonna reclass Narset, get a four-four body, draw another card. Avian Oddity. This I'm going to discard so that I can kill Renata at least. So that's one less creature I need to worry about blocking against. Alright. Going to pass the turn, be on the defensive the entire time right now. Wait for the midnight clock to go off. <clears throat> Alright, plays out Keenan. This is where he's, yep, that's what I was afraid of. Probably looking for an end razor right now to finish me off. Alright, Oro gives him some more life. Let's him draw two cards with Garrick's Uprising. So I have nine toughness. I'm close to possibly killing the Hydra. Um, let's see. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I could kill the Hydra with what I have on board. And 
and I'll gain some life out of the process with the Dream Trawler, so I won't be dead as fast. And then I guess we're going to try to hopefully swing it until we can go off on the midnight clock and regret a fresh hand. Alright, pass the blockers. Alright, so that's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14. All right. So he can't, so I have enough to kill him. He doesn't have enough power to kill all of my creatures, so I will have some blockers for next turn. I'm thinking the Dream Troll is going to die and the 4 4 Shark is going to die, and I'll probably have maybe two tokens left over. Pass the damage. goes the board. All right, so three creatures left. That's good. Now let's bring up Midnight Clock. All right, Midnight Clock's up to eight. Play out a command tower. That's minus another two. Take the action mover to the command zone. Vantasaur. I'll discard the gopher blood. And kill Keenan. Replay out Narset. This is why Fire's Invention is a busted card. The fact that I'm only that I'm always able to just pay the commander tax uh, is really insane. Draw another card. Where was like an ominous seas? Oh, emergency powers, there we go. Let's decline that. Imposing Vantasaur. I don't plan on, I'm gonna cast the Imposing Vantasaur. I don't plan on casting emergency powers unless I absolutely have to. Right now, I don't want my opponent getting all the cards in their uh, graveyard back into the hand and drawing our fresh seven cards. Uh, attacks. Um, I got flyers, I got a big body. Let's swing with the two flyers. Attacks. cards I have left in the library? I have 27 left in ours. Okay, in mine. Aggressive Mammoth is an 8-8. And emergency powers is just not expensive enough. Alright, so now we have to figure out how we're going to deal with this 8-8. Chromatic Lantern. We're gonna put the counters up, so 10, 11, so this will probably go off my opponent's turn. Altar of the Pantheon, devotion to either color, I guess? Each color, okay. Alright, I think I'm gonna start trying to plus up Narset now to get to her emblem. Um, I think that might be the best way for us to uh, win the game. Happening sphere minus creature opponents will get minus two minus zero oh, until end of turn. That might be helpful. All right, Azra Skilled Gate. Gain the two life. All right, I'm at eleven right now with the midnight clock. I'll add a blue, it doesn't really matter. At this point, am I going I might as well I'm gonna cycle the happening sphere, the happening snare, because I'm gonna lose it on their up my opponent's upkeep. So I'll just 
Alright, let's draw another card, get another token. There's startling development. Alright, I think I'm gonna sit tight. I'm gonna get the trigger on this one again next turn. So let's go to combat. Now making it a okay, I was thinking maybe make giving this a boost for the startling development, but it doesn't work. It works better as a surprise, so one. I know I'm just plinking at them, but uh, every little bit helps, I would say, right now. Also, the reason why I want to wait, I, if they try to remove the midnight clock, they um, I at least have a chance to respond by putting another counter on it. Alright, let's draw a fresh seven. Probable alliance goes up. Alright, we have unpredictable cyclone, which is good, and ominous tease, which is good. Now, actually, Ominous Seas and Unpredictable Cyclone don't necessarily work the best together because the Unpredictable Cyclone replaces the draw from the cycle with casting a spell, and Ominous Seas triggers when you draw. So, uh, we might be dead now because he actually managed to get the End Razor out. Resolves. Alrighty. Let's see what we can weather now. We have at least ten coming from the mammoth. The f uh, we have so that, that was we have that to count for. I can block six of the seven damage from the end razor. I can kill with the shredded sails. All right, so let's pass. Let's see. He's probably gonna attack with everything. Actually, I'm. All right, everything. Oh, they have vigilance. Okay. Exile target creature. That does make things trickier. All right, so let's start by casting shredded sail. I have fires of invention out, so I can't actually cast any of these cards, which then means in hindsight I was probably better off taking the time to uh, go off on the clock on my turn. All right, let that resolve. I get a three three. This pro I think this is probably the game. Uh, pass the blockers. Alright. So those cover that 7 damage. That leaves me with 15, 19. So he has a power of 10, 15, 15 is 21. Yeah, it's a good game, he's right. Yeah, no, this is now this is the word the downside of Fires of Invention. You're right, if I had seen it, if I had uh, done the shark to uh, the um, clock on my turn, I might have been able to cast some stuff, which would have given me bigger shark uh, tokens as well. Well, we did what we wanted, the deck wanted, did what it wanted to do, which was to draw a lot of cards that game. Hello and welcome to game four. We are playing against Ash Jarvis, piloting a Joel Rail. Mulvuli Recluse? Mulvuli Recluse? Okay. I'll work on the pronunciation. I'll find out how it's pronounced later, maybe. It's a mono green commander that whenever you draw your second card, put a 2 2 cat token, I believe, into play. So it's, I'm expecting a lot of card draw out of this deck. Um, what we got here? We got a turn one command tower into a flourishing fox. Uh, we have a shadow of the sky and a boon of the wish giver. I'm going to keep this. Uh, because I can play Flourishing Fox on one Azure's Guild Gate on turn two and still cycle Boon of the Wishgiver on turn two to give a plus one plus one count of the Flourishing Fox. Say hello to our opponent. Command Tower, Flourishing Fox. Boon of the Wishgiver is a card I thought would see more play. Um, I feel like it's you know it's a, you you know you get to draw a card at uh, different mana costs. You get for one you get to draw a card, or for six you get to draw four. Now we have decision to make here. I would say let's play out 
We were going to play out Boone in the first place. So let's attack and see if he offers a trade. If he offers a trade, we will cycle the Boone, which of the Boon of the Wish Giver. If he decides to take the damage, I will play out the planes. and cast Valiant Rescuer. This way then, when we cycle next turn, depending on what we draw, we might be able to cycle twice. If we draw an I'm coming to play untapped land, we might want to try to cycle twice. Uh, one on our turn, one on their turn. Woodland Mystic. Okay. It's a newer land of war, or Elf of Swords. No blocks, we'll take the one point of damage. Probable Alliance. Alright, play the Azorius Guildgate. Next, swing out with the Flourishing Fox. Move the blockers, no blocks. Cycle Boon of the Wish Giver. Probably should have actually waited to play my land. If only because if I get a land that comes to play untap. Depending on what that land was. I could have played out the Improbable Alliance. Alright, so next turn we get four. Or again, I could have at least or at least kept open two to cycle the crystal and have gotten another token. Let's see, the commander costs one and a green is a one-two. End of turn, could you control a base power to this or X number of cards in your hand? So there, there are green creatures. Green has an interesting history with card draw. It's not the best at it, but it, I think also outside of blue has more, more creatures that care about what cards in hand are, or at least some commanders that care about that. We have a coordinated charge that we can't cast. Because whenever a non-token creature comes into play. Alrighty. So we definitely want to be cycling. I think I'm gonna, yeah, so I'm gonna try to go with, okay, I'm gonna go with the Improbable Alliance. Swing with my two creatures, cycle the Rangriff this turn, so I can get the draw and get myself another body. Two attacks. We have the Shatter and, and Shatter of the Sky in case things do get crazily out of hand. Cycle the Crystal. Get two tokens and a plus one plus one counter on the Fox. Shark Typhoon. All right, oh, so this is a situation where I think Shark Typhoon, well, if we cycle it, we get a 2-2, two, two, I believe. It's X, one blue. So we would get a 2-2 two, two with that. All right, and that's a, he probably has another creature in hand as well, or a pump spell. All right, time to be cautious about what our opponent is going to be doing. I could cast Narset, minus two. I think the most likely thing to expect would be a Heroic Intervention. Um, I definitely expect some sort of combat trick. As much as, actually, I'm gonna hold back on the one one tokens, uh, because the worst guy I get to have these two trades for one of those. Two attacks. Next. And I have, I could actually cycle two things here. Uh, the coordinated charge. Having the surprise 2-2 two, two flyer. I think better off trying to, actually, let's cycle the rooting Moloch. The coordinated charge is a card where, uh, we're, since we're at the moment going wide, Having that as a possible finisher might be better. Alrighty. I guess we're going to overwhelm them with the tokens. They didn't want to deal with that. And that is the video for today. If you like today's video, please click the thumbs up icon down below. If you want to get notified of when I release a new video, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Please leave a comment on how I could have played better with this deck, uh, future deck ideas, or ways to improve this deck. I'm just starting out the channel, so any suggestions on how to improve my videos would also be greatly appreciated. 
Thanks for visiting the Batcave and have a great day.